Good morning, and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL, the return of Guide Day. And so far, we've stayed in the fresh water from Florida to New York to Arizona to Louisiana and Texas. And this time, we're going to go out west. And we're still going to focus on bass. We're going to focus on a bass that uh, I know me living in Oklahoma and the majority of bass anglers probably haven't caught uh, saltwater bass, calico bass, and go to Captain Ben Florentino. Ben, thanks for jumping on BTL. Hey, thanks for having me, Matt. I'm excited to talk about our West Coast saltwater bass. (laughs) It is. So uh, I've talked to you a little bit about uh, this in the past at uh, Bassmaster Classics. Uh, your son, Matt, runs a lot of stuff over at AFCO in California. I've always seen him hosting up, holding up pictures. When I first got to know Matt, I said, what in the hell is that? And he goes, dude, he goes, it's a calico bass. And it's almost like largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass all mixed together. Uh, and then I started asking some people, and they're like, dude, you know his dad is like a... a legendary captain and and guide out there in the Southern California area. He's like one of the dudes and no. So then I got to meet you. And when I came up with this concept for guide day, I wanted to give viewers and listeners unique opportunities, whether you travel for work, you're somewhere on vacation, you just want to take a cool trip, but learn more about what you're getting into. And I said, dude, I got to get Captain Florentino on guide day because uh, this is very uh, intriguing to me. And I think for a lot of bass anglers who are used to just the freshwater, intriguing to them as well. But uh, talk a little bit, dive into it, start with about, let's do an overview of the fishery. I know there's different types of these saltwater bass, an overview of the fishery and what exactly you guide for. Yeah. Well, at the hierarchy, calico bass is, is, um, you know, the king per se, uh, that gets all the credit. Um, you know, there are three species of saltwater bass, um, spotted bay bass, which catch back in your harbors and estuaries that when the kids can walk, ride their bikes, fish, swim baits, uh, bladed jigs, etc., crankbaits. Then you have sand bass is kind of in the mix. You can catch them offshore in structure. You can catch them back in the har- harbors, but calico bass is what, what all the trophy hunters go after. It's like my peers. Um, they spawn from May through August, uh, July being, you can catch a hundred plus bass on a four inch swim bait all day. Um, hundred plus bass up, you know, one to three pounders. And that one's a, that's a trophy. That's a 10, four, um, caught on a surface iron. But that's a calico bass. That's That's what we're talking about right here. That is a calico bass. And, you know, uh, trophies for a calico bass, 10 pound is is like the uh, is the goal. Um, You know, there's a lot of guys like my son, Matt, his Mm -hmm. biggest one is like nine and a half. And there's guys in our group that's caught him no bigger than nine pounds. Ten is the goal. Um, But you can catch him as far north as realistically go out and catch him as far north as Santa Barbara. Wow, and the outer islands, and then as far south as northern Baja, and that's it all over the world. You can only catch them on the west coast, parts of Mexico, and the outer islands here. So, how did you get into this? Has this been something that you've done since uh, since childhood? And then talk about getting into kind of the guiding business. And I think there's also a tournament aspect, very similar to like there is in freshwater bass fishing as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I got into it, you know. We have, you know, I think across uh, country, they call them head boats. We call them party boats. Okay. 30, 40 guys on a, on a trip. And in summertime, I used to fish as a kid, ride my bike down to the landing, jump on, fish live anchovies, live sardines. Then back in the late 70s, a guy turned me on to these rubber swim baits and heads. He goes, hey, kid, instead of running back to the, to the bait tank, try this out. And I found, you know, casting and winding on them and catching a number uh, uh, of bass without changing live bait. And, you know, back then the tackle was kind of dinosaur-like, you know, monofilament, uh, pen jiggers and squitters. And, um, you know, the early days we didn't have um, the tools we have now. And then I got into the plastics fishing. I got my own skiff 
And then the rest was history. I just started fishing strictly artificials. You know, again, we were fishing with with millionaire 6300s, 30 pound mono, uh, flipping sticks from the freshwater because they didn't have the gear we have now. Braided line, smaller reels, and all the different patterns we can throw. So it was only two types of fishing. One was uh, you saw the jig in that that 10 pound fish. It's a surface mm -hmm. iron, an aluminum jig. It's a cast. It's about seven inches long. And uh, it's funny, I I actually have that jig, I say, because those are trophies, but this gives you kind of an idea of the size of that thing, right? Okay, that's a that's a big, big bait. What does it weigh? It's about 2.5 ounces, two and a half okay. ounces. So, and we're throwing it on nine foot rods, 80 pound braid, 50 pound leader, because the areas we're fishing, unlike covering the freshwater, we have boulders, rock, kelp, and you might accidentally hook a 20 pound yellowtail, which is a jack, a 40 pound sea bass, which we've caught. So you need a lot of that pulling power and the length of the rods only used for launching that thing a mile. Really? I'm going to pull up a, uh, pull up a video here. This is you. Are you guys fishing for calicos here? It looks like that's a, a swim bait that you have on there. There's Matt right there. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that's a pretty beefy rod, but you guys are targeting these things. Holy cow. That's uh, yeah, that looks a little bit like Santee yeah, on so, day two. Yeah, right so there. That, yeah, that's um, in Mexico. We actually did a 60 mile run from San Diego to, to Northern Baja. And we're fishing basically in, in about 10 feet of water. You know, when freshwater guys say we're fishing shallow 10 to five feet, that's fine. But when you've got two to four foot waves, and you've seen waves when you fish with Kate or surf with Casey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That white water in the background. We're in some stuff. So uh, we don't have the trolling motor down. We have the big motor on. And that fish is way back. You could see the rocks way in the background. And that's that's my good buddy, Afrin Abutin from Warbaits. He launched that thing way back in those boilers back there, uh, a surface iron to get these type of fish. And that's where they hang out. That's why the heavy line, that's why it's, it's an excitement thing, right? If you're an excitement, if you're a, a junkie for that stuff, it's, it's pretty exciting throwing a surface iron or a big swim bait, uh, back in those boilers. Uh, all right. So this reminds me of, uh, let's say a mixture of big swim baiting for bass with musky fishing mixed into it with the element of adventure uh as far as kind of being in the salt water and the surf so like you're you're talking an adrenaline rush oh absolutely and you yeah, get absolutely up on these things so it's much more i guess i would say uh adrenaline driven than bass fishing uh in freshwater where you can have some adrenaline but there you're talking to like a lot of long periods of and especially if you throw a carolina rig or something this is all kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat and really cool <laughs> visual and audio you got the waves crashing and all this stuff and that's right. a typical area where you catch these these calicos i mean yes that's that's where the trophies hang they tr they hang in that wash i mean you can fish um calmer waters where there's kelp or fish structure but we tend to get these bigger ones. Like lately, my last trip was about a week and a half ago before I went to Lake Fork. I was actually at Lake Fork and, and was at that event with Matt. Okay. But, um, we were fishing basically in 10 feet of water with, uh, hey, there's Milliken right there. Um, uh, 10 feet of water, very little surge and one ounce swim jigs and six inch baits. And my guy, the biggest fish we caught was over six. This day we were flipping 80 feet of water and kelp stringers. So well, you said that's, is that Ben Milliken? That's Ben Milliken there. Yeah. Are you serious? So he's uh, gone yeah. out on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. How old so, is this? Oh my gosh. That's gotta be about seven years old. Maybe. Is that oh my like gosh. Eight? I literally just clicked on one of the ones on your channel. I didn't know that was Ben. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is that the kelp beds in the background? Right yeah. You see the kelp in about? the background? Yeah. yeah we're, fish we're fishing an underwater point that comes out to about 120 feet. And then it, it's just like, you know, I use my mapping like you would fishing a long point, um, a long point at a lake, right? Um, and we're doing the same thing. We're just uh, fishing all the uh, uh, the outer points that come out because these fish in the wintertime will come outside to eat bait. 
So we're metering bait and we're metering the fish under the bait on these long extended points from, from the beach. So if you fish the Cal Delta or even like, uh, Toledo Bend, anywhere, uh, uh, Gunnersville, anywhere where you punch hydrilla edges with a two ounce weight, like that's what this is on steroids. Oh, big time. Yeah. Big, big time. Yeah. And, and we're the, do they go donk and you feel them and just crack them is what it looked like? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the biggest thing on those is they suck them in just like a large mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing about it, if you hook a two pounder, you'd feel like you had a six pound large mouth. They just don't jump. They, they bury their head down and that's why the heavy gear, because mm -hmm. everything is rod tip up instead of down. And these things are trying to bury in the rock, the kelp and just jack you up. So has this type of fishing evolved as the freshwater bass fishing tips and tactics have evolved? Like, like were you guys doing this stuff before guys were punching with heavy or are you looking at bass stuff or watching an elite series tournament or going, you know what? that would play in the salt and then adapting it or are they kind of mutually independent? I think, I think the freshwater, uh, the bass guys may have taken a lot from us. Ah, um, drop shot came from the salt water. Um, okay. Um, but we do, I mean, our inner harbors fishing that spotted bay bass, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're fishing crank spinner bait, drop shot, Ned rigs, uh, you know, swim baits it's a little more bass i would say bass guy friendly uh because of all the different patterns we fish mm -hmm. uh, whereas calico it's pretty um it's pretty simple if you had to narrow it down you know we're throwing big jerk baits we're throwing big uh swim baits weedless type baits let's see what i got you know we have under spins we're fishing this kind of stuff here okay like five inch so very very similar and then of course glide baits this happens to be a ds customs my my buddy donald makes but something like this too this is a big glide we're starting to throw more and more glides now yeah absolutely subsurface or will they come up and crash that thing just under oh, the surface they'll crack it on the surface yeah really oh my gosh yeah and you know it's just like say a small mouth at uh, champlain where you hook one there's about three or four with them they'll be like five or 10 of them and they're all about the same size. So if you hook a five pounder, like they tend to group together in size, five pounders will stay with five, six, et cetera, et cetera. And generally the smaller ones will do the same. Uh, and sometimes those giants, you know, those seven to 10 pound models will be lurking underneath. So if the bait gets missed, then they, they take an opportunity to, to, to crack it. I know you've had uh, a lot of high end bass guys in your boat. You actually, were featured what how long ago is it you were on city limits with ike that had to Ooh. been Ooh, back in the day but i mean you've had ike you've had jared Littner, you've had a yep. number of uh different i think uh even a mark yeah Bray, brent ayler a mart in fact tomorrow i'm meeting uh uh byron velvet at catalina picking him up and fishing tomorrow what has been the reaction of of the the bass professionals at top guys when you get them out on the saltwater species um, you know, the one thing I do know, and you know, you guys are really good, um, especially the guys in the elite level, they can, they can adjust to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one thing they do enjoy most is how hard they pull for, for the size. Like I said, a three to five pound fish will just tear you apart. You just won't believe how, how much, especially on the surface and, uh, how followers, like if, if a guy's bit and he's bringing it in, how many There'll be like 10 fish behind it, how they'll, you flip behind them and you, you, you can hook one right away. But their, their whole feeling is that they just pull harder. Um, they're apt to eat different types of bait. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the main thing is just how hard they pull. Let's talk time of the year, mm -hmm. regardless as a guide, uh, you know, that there are prime times of the year to go out where you're, you're just like, dude, we're, we're more apt to have uh, a memorable day. Talk about, kind of the cycle of this type of fishery and these fish and just kind of go seasonally. Uh, and if you were to get out on the water, like what you would consider the prime time. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the prime time. The prime time okay. is, is May through August. It's, it's pre it's spawn, it's pre spawn and spawn 
and then it's post-spawn. So we do have our season just like that. Pre-spawn is basically starting now because our water temps never drop below 59 this year. So mm -hmm. like right now at Catalina, it's 61, 62. So the fish think it's pre-spawn. So we're tending to, we tend to catch a little bit bigger fish up shallow because the fish are up there gorging before spawn. Um, so you have to work a little bit, but you're going to get them. But uh, the best time, like I said, summer, a uh, lot of, a lot of catch. Um, you know, my biggest, uh, my biggest fish was caught in October. Um, and I also caught one in April, a 10, eight in April. Um, some of my clients, you know, I, that's one thing I could brag about. I've had four clients catch them over 10. Wow. Uh, which is a feat. Yeah. Uh, one was in July, one was in August, two in August and one was in June. Um, so, you know, it, it varies. It depends on the year. Unlike lakes that are pretty seasonal as far as water temp, et cetera, et cetera. Ocean's a big pond that we have to figure out almost daily. So. And, and so it, you can fish for them 12 months out of the year, though. Like oh, it's absolutely, not, yeah. and, and catch them and have success. Yeah, I mean, during the cold months for me in January, February, March, mm -hmm. which is the coldest, I'm fishing rock structure in 30 feet with uh, swim jigs and catching anywhere from 15 to 50 bass. Up wow. to five pounds. Yeah. You can catch. There's places to catch. There's I have winter winter areas if you want to catch bass. And of course, if we have streaks of warm weather, which California can do, and the bait pushes into like the kelp areas, uh boy, you can get them on the surface. Uh spinner bait, jerk bait, swim bait. And is this a is this a deal where you could have a guy who's a bass fisherman who comes in and just does one day or is this a, a multi-day thing? Like how far are you running out from the time? Like you meet your, your clients or you dump the boat in at the launch ramp to the time you're catching calicos. I, Cause I just think ocean, right? Yeah. So I'm it thinking like, like three hour run out to blue water, like no land, but this is not like that. No, I mean my, my Island trips, or, I mean, round trip, it's four hours. You know, okay. if we're going to San Clemente Island, it's it's 60 miles away. But that's that's where the, the big ones, you'll get more three to five, six, seven pounders there um, year round, depending on conditions. Or it could be a 20 minute run up to Palos Verdes, which is kind of like my home home lake. I've, I've fished there for over 35 plus years along the coast. And you just have to look for conditions. It's a very conditions place and it generally bites really good in the afternoon, but it can be 15 minutes. It can be two hours, depending if it's an Island, like tomorrow, Catalina, I'm yep. running 45. I don't know my new Camus. I'd get there in, in 30 minutes if I wanted. Um, um, but it's about 45 to an hour run if you're taking your time. And vessel wise, you mentioned the Camus you're talking, what a 25, 26 foot, uh, right. like a deep B bay boat. This yeah, isn't like new, a bass boat. Right. The new Camus that, that I just, I just took in, I've only been on the water with it three times and this will be my second guide trip. Uh, it's a 26 footer, uh, Mercury Verado V10, one of the new V10s, uh, -huh. uh total Johnson outboards, uh, J Johnson, uh, 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 electronics package, the new, uh, Minn Kota instinct, uh, twin, uh, Solex 12 birds, uh, the whole deal radar, uh, it's, it's built, you know, and I have gear for up to three people, you know, 300 size reels, all Shimano. I'm, I'm a Shimano pro. So they get some of the best gear and then spin gear, same thing. It's sustains G Loomis's, um, and then all the lures you want. But yeah, the vehicle I have is basically a, uh, overgrown bass boat for sure. And is this something that you think, it, it, do you have families ever come on? Like, like guys that bring their kids or, <laughs> if, you know, small, or is it more of a kind of, I'm thinking like a Falcon trip where you're like, Hey, you're probably kind of out in the middle or is this right. a family friendly guy? Oh, experience? It, it, yeah. I, I, I'm family friendly. I've seen a lot of kids grow up on my trips, you know, okay. Uh, I've, got, I've got a family that, that comes out. Well, father, son, daughter, uh, mm -hmm. dad's got a 10, four, Son's got one over eight and his sister's got one over five. Um, and they've been fishing with me for well over 12 years. So, um, and then, you know, I get guys that bring their, their daughters out for like a three hour trip. We go out in the middle of summer, go out, hammer them, you know, they catch a bunch and then they're done, you know, type <laughs> thing. So, 
how far are yeah. you from LA? Like, let's say you're in LA or you have like a, a full day. Is that doable to do a, to do a trip or? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have people coming as far North as Ventura or yeah. Ventura, which is hour and a half away as far South as San Diego, hour and a half away. I drive an hour to pick my boat up from AFCO and then I go. So uh, my day starts early, but yeah, I've had them from all over people, you know, like, Families going to Disneyland, the dad and son want to go fishing. It's they'll nice. usually hit me up. Right. Right. Or San Diego or something all in that issue. Exactly. If you're doing like yeah. a three or four day deal, this is, uh, yeah. you can experience it all in one day. It's not, you don't have to spend two or three days. And then otherwise weather, big water, you go up to Erie. If you only book one day, you're really rolling the dice as right. to whether you're going to be standing on the bank, watching seven footers or out there okay. catching walleye and smallmouth. Fairly consistent weather in, in Southern California, though, yeah, for the most part. For the most part, the worst time, I mean, the worst weather we usually have generally is January through March. And mm -hmm. that's that's been that way for years. And then, you know, don't be surprised. I mean, the some of the busiest times I get is during Thanksgiving. Uh, because we get such stable weather, generally, you know, low 70s. And, uh, you know, like last January, I did 20 trips in, uh, excuse me, in November. I did 20 trips in November. Uh, 16 in December, October was 20 plus September was it's down because it's beginning of school and all that, but I did 18. Um, so I can be really busy from September through December, but January, February, March, yeah, we, we have some adverse weather, colder, windy rain, understandable, uh, catch and release or you, you cast catch count mountain cook. <laughs> is it like, I don't know if it's like large mouth or not. Like I know everything in the salt water is typically delicious, well, but what's the, to give an idea, a 10 pound calico is probably close to 40 years old. Yeah. You're letting um, that thing go. Yeah. So any, like my, I do allow my guests to keep a couple. Our, our legal size is 14. We don't have a s slot limit, which I tried okay. to propose when it went through. Um, our bag limit is five, but a lot of people just keep one or two for tacos and anything over uh, four pounds. I don't allow. That's my rule on the boat. So, and most people keep one or two or mm -hmm. two or three and that's it. Uh, but they do grow slow. Um, for the 90% of my guests catch a release. Okay. Awesome. You do offer, uh, offer some different types of trips to not just for, uh, the Calico and the spotted bay bass. You, you also, if people want to, can do specialty trips to target other species. Is that right? Yeah, I do. But, you know, I, I'll have to talk to the people on the phone. I usually do kind of a okay. phone interview because okay. what I offer is, is I really do try to uh, offer the inshore bass fishing. Yeah, that's and, the main deal. Yeah, that's my main deal. The other stuff is incidental. A lot of times we'll be coming back like happened five or six times last summer. We come across bluefin tuna on the way to the harbor, five, <laughs> 10 miles off the harbor. We have foamers of bluefin. And uh, I'll say not those hundred pounders, but those 50 pounders were good, you know? So, and those go in the box. They usually take one. <laughs> yeah. I, so I've caught like a five pounder. What is the land ratio on a 50 pound bluefin on like heavy bass tackle? It's gotta be like one in 10. Oh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, oh, you, you remember we're fishing, we're fishing 400 size reels, a medium heavy type rod, a uh, 65 pound braid, and usually the leader is heavy. It's, and we're throwing lures, you know, we're talking 60 to 80 pound leader. So depending on the angler, mm -hmm. I, we have about a 80% chance of land. I haven't uh, lost you. Yeah. All right. The website is a uh, fish coastal charters there's captain ben florentino there yeah. there's a lot of information on it uh price wise and i know this varies year to year but ballpark you want to come out you want to get your hands on some of these calicos fish with you for a full day for a half day what are we talking about i mean half day we're talking seven hundred dollars full day nine uh the island catalina's 14 that's up to three mm -hmm. anglers Okay. Um, I supply the beverages, the tackle. All they got to do is bring a, a lunch and, and enjoy the day. So you're, you could do three anglers for a full day, 300 yep. a piece. And then obviously plus the tip, I got a bunch of buddies who are guides that sometimes they call me after and they're always like, I just don't think they knew that there was supposed to be a tip that that's included in that. So you're looking at 350, 400 for a full day. Now, let me ask you this. 
if I'm a bass angler and I got two of my other buddies, this isn't like a bass boat. Like you can fish around this boat. It's not like the guy at the trolling boat is murdering all of them and the rest of the guys watch it or you have to switch. Like you're kind of more equal opportunity or. Absolutely. No, okay. I place, I place the boat. So everybody is in the sweet spot, you know, and I have full rate of the trolling motor. Um, and, um, you know, I can operate everything from my, my fish finders. So I'm, I'm connected to my trolling motor. But at the same time, I do run the big motor a lot for safety's sake, uh, but there's plenty of room. I mean, three guys can fish artificials on the bow. No problem. All right. Uh, Coastal Charters uh, based out of here. I'll th throw this out to you. So I'm assuming that's where you're based. That's yeah, where you I'm go out, out of right that's there. My home port is Long Beach, but I do I do launch out of Newport every now and then if, if people are coming from Orange County or San Diego, just to make it convenient. But Long Beach is my home port, so... <laughs> And best way to get a hold of you, uh, Ben at fishcoastalcharters.com. That's it. And also the phone number 310-779-0397. I answer the phone. I answer texts. Um, any way you want to do it, it's it's all good. I I really encourage some of your listeners, if they happen to be in California and they want to go out for the day to come out, I mean, it's you want to get your bass fix in for sure. It's, it's a fun time and they pull hard, especially when they hit – the top water, the top water is, is everything. So, uh, you know, my girlfriend is from a mission Viejo and I'm okay. out in California quite a bit. So mm -hmm. Matt has been like, dude, we got to get you on some calicos, uh, this year. So I, I look forward to, to catching my first calico bass, uh, what I had out there. Now you think you're off the hook, but we haven't even talked about the tournament aspect of this. Cause this, oh, is, yeah. what, <laughs> this is what's got me really, really geeked up. We took care of the logistics. We kind of understand what's going on, where these fish are, how they set up, what they are. But what I was shocked, uh, and excited to find out was, dude, you guys have like bass tournaments, just like we have bass tournaments in fresh water. Like you bring a bit, it's pretty much the same thing, right? It, same exact rules, five alive minimum, um, you know, big fish, uh, big bag. FYI, you know, Matt, Matt and his part partner Randy have the largest bag to date, 36, seven, eight for five fish. Wow. That's but um, you know, and I, I got an AOY in 2008, but yeah, it's you know, at, at our heyday, we had over 75 boats. Um, now they're running about 40. Um, and again, it's big fish. We have uh, shotgun started. Used to be flights, but they went back to the shotgun start. Oh, uh, you guys do have shotguns. Uh, I guess uh, you just oh, all yeah. just. Burr. Oh yeah, yeah. The little guys will usually <laughs> stay back and go the other way. But we did do flights for a long while. But I don't mm -hmm. know why they brought the shotgun. I mean, I've got a twenty-six footer with a four hundred Verado, so I don't have a problem with it. But, but uh, yeah, it's it's a cool deal. You know, it it's been. Uh, we've had saltwater tournaments since two really serious one since 2005. There's been small ones throughout the year. Our local um, paper, Western Outdoor News, which you're familiar with, yeah. they ran them forever. I mean, they had 150 boat fields at one point back in the day. Uh, in fact, uh, Matt fished a tournament with me. Uh, we, we got seventh or sixth okay. out of 150 boats one year. With 21 pounds, we got six, 21, six, three. So but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty legit. There's a a really um, a good crowd of guys that uh, that enjoy the the tournament series. Absolutely, we're all bass heads. Yeah, no, that's exciting. It's it's amazing uh, as you travel across the country and you meet people. Like whether you go up to uh, uh, Alaska and you you hang out with the steelhead purists, or you're on the coast with the saltwater stuff, and then. I've been around the catfish guys for a little bit and they're, you know, wrapped boats. Like I'm like, dude, like right. you just chuck out a piece of cup bait, right? No, it's like super technical. Same with the walleye. Uh, yeah. The ice fishing is like that as well. I just got back from Minnesota uh, where I caught my first burbot or eel pout. And like this kid's 24 and like all he lives for is catching eel pout the winter through the ice. But uh, I find it really fascinating. Uh, you know, some of the people have moved there, like they take a, a liking to it and they've moved there right? and they've learned it. Some of the people were, were born there. They grew up with it, kind of like what you did. And it was just what was around them. It's just really interesting to learn about the different dynamics. And I think 
whether you're just looking to enjoy your day on the water, whether you're looking to become a better angler, whether you're looking to, to have an experience with your buddies or your significant other uh, or your friends, but instead of doing the same thing over and over, kind of expanding those horizons, getting outside your comfort zone and doing something for the first time in fishing is always exciting. Oh yeah. I, I tell you every, I mean, I've had people from Wisconsin that lives, you know, on the great lakes that fish smallmouth. you know, they tell me about mm -hmm. their six, seven pounders and they come out here fishing for calicos and they just get blown away. You know, um, it's, it, it's a great fishery that I love to share with different people. That's <laughs> either never done it. Talk about it. it it's a, it's kind of one of those uh, bucket list things for people. They come out going, man, I gotta, I gotta check that out. You know, I gotta check it out. So uh, it's really enjoyable for me to share what we have. It's it's unique. It's unique. That's um, that that you can't do anywhere else in the world. I mean, you can catch largemouth everywhere. You can catch peacock mm -hmm. bass, but you can't catch calicos uh, anywhere else. Now, do you guys ever uh, buy catch? So, East Coast uh, and Southeast. I'm I'm a big fan of the sheep's head that right. the, with the black and white bars with the yep. actual teeth. Now on the West coast, they have a deal called a sheep's head, but they're black and orange and look yep. totally different. That's on my bucket list as well. Is that something that you, do you guys ever like accidentally catch one of those suckers? We caught, we caught in the winter time you tend cause you're fishing a lot of structure where they hang out and we're fishing two baits for the bass. And yeah, we've, we've accidentally caught like up to 15 pound sheep head. They're, those are freaking monsters. And they start out, as you know, they start out as female at all pink. And then as they get, get to male, they turn black, white, and red. So really I and then did the not know off, that. Yeah, pretty, pretty gnarly fish. And they pull like heck. And, yeah, we actually catch those. I mean, a lot of the bycatch we catch is white sea bass, um, yellowtail, uh, tuna, uh, halibut, um, uh, you know, a lot of different things. We're throwing lures that looks like bait. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Those things are wild. <laughs> Those things are wild, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they're built. They're built for power. I mean, those things are built for power for sure. For uh, sure. That, that's exciting. Uh, as far as booking out, are you are you pretty booked out? Like weeks, months in advance. If this is something that uh, you want to get in on, spend a day in the Camus with you. Uh, to get on it now to book months in advance or, or how are we working on that? July, July and August tends to book up really quick. Cause that's, that's the, yep. a really good month. And I generally will fish um, Catalina Island, but I have, I have dates available. They can look, they can contact me and I can send them what they have. Uh, summertime, you know, I have a lot of dates available during the week, which I encourage because the weekends at Cal in California can be just like any lake across the country. Oh, really? The so the ocean gets crowded? Oh, my oh no. The ocean does or the ramp does? Both. Both. Do. Oh, yeah. I never even thought about that. I figured, heck, you're, you're good to go out there. Oh, no, no. You're not the only one. It's It gets pretty crowded, especially Catalina, because Catalina in the summer is some of the best fishing because you can catch numbers, you catch variety, and um, um, it's just a gorgeous island to go to. Uh, all right. Is this the same... Catalina Island from Step Brothers, where they had the wine mixer. Oh yeah, really? That is like the Catalina Island. Catalina Island, yeah. And you know, it's funny because the <laughs> iconic casino, the casino there, everybody wants to take a picture. So I, I generally will grab, gravitate over there. He goes, "This is the backdrop you want," because that way you can say, "God, I was at the effing <laughs> Catalina, Catalina wine, wine mixer." mixer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh that's I talked awesome to Belvic yesterday on the phone he goes ben i'm standing in front of the effing wine wine mixer having a mai tai <laughs> that that's very fitting it is yeah. uh anything else that i miss in here before uh before i let you go i've thoroughly enjoyed this like i said i love learning about new stuff uh, I know we've tried a couple times to get this episode in, and I think that all of the largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass anglers from coast to coast are going to be very intrigued um, with this similar yet incredibly diverse fishery in the salt. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, if our weather gets kind of windy and lumpy outside, we have that whole inner harbor where we can fish spotted bay bass or sand bass that get, I mean, I had um, Martin Truex Jr. out, um, mm -hmm. 
We had really bad weather to go to Cat. We fished the Inner Harbor with A rigs. He caught a sand bass over seven pounds. Um, and then we caught a bunch of three to fives. And he was just blown away that we we're, you know, around all these containers and container ships. And we we're smoking, you know, we were just smoking them that day. So, but um, I mean, I just encourage if you're out in California, you have a half day half, or a full day to come out fishing, mm -hmm. come out and check it out. Or, hey, feel free to call me if you're interested. Maybe not this year, maybe the following year, maybe in the fall, you're going to visit people out for Christmas, whatever it may be. Give me a call, you know, ask me any questions about our fishery, tackle, et cetera. I, I love to share what we have. I will say this also. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time out in that Southern California area now over the past, you know, eight, nine, ten months. Uh, and I have been shocked at how cool it is, how relaxing and laid back it is between the beaches. If you want to do the touristy sightseeing stuff, you can. There's a lot of really cool pristine beaches that aren't crowded between all the boardwalks and the piers and the places to eat traffic can kind of stink yep. but it is such a cool place to kind of unwind relax quality food really laid back which when you think of that la to southern california like i said for an oklahoma guy or a guy who grew up in illinois it's such a cool, much cooler place that I envisioned in my head before I'd gone out and actually experienced it. Yeah. It's, you know, and I, I said the same thing about Texas when I was out there for the <laughs> work event. People are just so nice. I yeah. mean, uh, un unbelievably nice. Yes, ma'am. Y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, uh, when I was at that event at, at uh, Lake Fork, boy, I was just, uh, uh, Oh yeah. You're in the heart of Texas there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Just some friendly people. And, uh, but uh, yeah, we have a, we really do. I mean, that's why we stay and that's what our fishery is what, what really keeps us going. And I don't think it gets talked about enough. They talk about the tuna thing that's going on, that's been going on for the last 10 years, but we've had calico bass since I was a kid. So I just think that only the uh, hardcore guys do it and we try to share it just because it's a special, special deal out here. One more question. Would you consider it a stable fishery? Like, is it, does it have its ebbs and flows or is it a very stable fishery as far as quality and numbers? I mean, for the uh, numbers that I've seen, it looks really good. The spawn's been good. Um, I haven't seen as many, like for, for example, last year, the biggest fish I caught was seven. Okay. Every year I, I tend to get one about like nine. Um, January 1st, I got one close to seven. So I'm starting my my year off right. My client yeah. got one two weeks ago, over six. So we'll see what Velvic does tomorrow. But I think it's stable right now because our water temp's been stable. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some big ones this year because um, I sure would like to get another 10 before this is over. But um, uh, I really enjoy it. And there, you can catch numbers. I think, I, in fact, I know summertime, you know, you throw an A-rig, uh, you catch, you can load up on them until you're tired and, uh, um, and, and with numbers, anything from one to five pounds. So that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. phenomenal. Captain Ben Florentino from Coastal Charters down there in Southern California. Uh, check it out. I got the link to uh, his website and email in the YouTube description of this show. Thank you very much for the time. Like I said, we've tried this a couple times. We finally got it in. It was everything I hoped and dreamed it would be. And uh, I think that's all we got. Right on, Matt. Hey, thank you for having me. And uh, I hope to see you real soon. I will. I, I will definitely be in touch. This is definitely, uh, definitely on my to-do list. So cool. take care. Thanks, man. See ya. All right. Captain Florentino. Very cool. Uh, I, I did not know that there was a fishery that existed that was so similar to bass, uh, yet so different. And like I said, anytime you can experience something new, uh, I think is, is critical to get that adrenaline rush to, to catch a new species, to go out on a body of water that you're unfamiliar with, to experience something that, you know, might be a once in a lifetime. Uh, if you have the means, the ability, and you're in the area, definitely worth a shot. All right. Uh, that wraps it up for this week of BTL. We will be back on Monday with a brand new live show. 
listen, guys, if you if you're a guy, uh, if you know someone who's a guy, if you've been on a guide trip, I'm talking unique, cool uh, experiences. Maybe a guy that you've learned an incredible amount from. I already know. I, I, I've received feedback from uh, uh, Jimmy Mason and a number of other guys that we've had on Guide Day. Uh, who have had BTL listeners who have booked uh, and have really enjoyed their experience. But hit me up, either shoot me a DM at Matt Pengrek on Instagram or email me, Matt, at Bassone.com. I know there's a bunch of you guys that have that said, hey, you need to get this guy on and this guy and this guy. I have a backlog of it. I'm working towards it, but uh, greatly appreciate the feedback on that. I think that's all we got. We're probably back in the freshwater next week, but a little salty edition of guide day to wrap up the week. We'll see everybody later.